Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another one of Mr. Lang's vlogs. Today, we're talking about two presidents, uh, John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, really, the Kennedy Johnson years, which took up a lot of the 1960s, as you're going to see. So, to help ease tensions, Khrushchev and Kennedy begin to go ahead and establish a hotline in 1963 between the White House and the Kremlin, which is essentially the White House and the Soviet Union. Um, what, ends, what that is, is a direct line from president to president. And later that year, the superpowers are even going to sign a limited test ban treaty that served to ban nuclear testing in the atmosphere, as of course, that was something that had been occurring. And so, of course, Kennedy actually initiates his program here for the U.S., his domestic program called the New Frontier. This was essentially focused on the economy, education, medical care for the elderly and the poor, uh, and space exploration, all part of his vision in this program. And in fact, one of the most important things that he did create was the Peace Corps. You know, this program is still around today. It's fantastic. Uh, it's again a volunteer program to assist developing nations in Asia, Africa, and Latin American countries. Um, and it has become a huge success. It's incredible. Uh, it really is. There's also the race to the moon, because they're going to the moon. On April 12th, 1961, Soviet cosmonaut, which is a really cool name for an astronaut, but that's what the Soviets call them, cosmonauts, uh, Yuri Gagarin uh, became the first human in space. And meanwhile, we had NASA here in America. They're going to be in, they're going to be in construction on Cape Canaveral, which is in Florida. Uh, and this huge, huge, uh, it's still there today, uh, launch pad called the Kennedy Space Center. And then, of course, they're going to also have the uh, very, very famous control center in Houston, Texas, as, of course, the famous line is, you know it. Houston, we have a problem. That's it. That's it. And so if you believe we put a man on the moon. Great reference. So finally, on July 20th, 1969, the U.S. achieved its goal. An excited nation watched as U.S. astronaut Neil Armstrong took the first steps on the moon. You know, the space and defense related industries really going to spring up in the southern and western states uh, because of this. And the space race was won. So Kennedy also addresses a lot of inner city flight and racism. Again, in 1963, Kennedy called for a national assault on the causes of poverty. In fact, he orders Bobby Kennedy to investigate racial injustice in the South. Again, he is very much into civil rights. And again, making sure African Americans are getting well, the treatment they deserve as American citizens. Uh, and again, equality across the law. And so finally, he presented Congress with a sweeping uh, civil rights bill and a sweeping tax cut bill to spur the economy, to help the economy grow. And to, of course, help, hopefully help injustice going on against African Americans in the South. But of course, we all know what happened. On a sunny day, November 22nd, 1963, Air Force One landed in Dallas with JFK and Jackie. And, you know, JFK was received with a very warm applause from the crowd. Um, they lined the downtown streets of Dallas and they rode in the backseat of an open air limousine, a Lincoln, uh, as you can see here. And so the next um, couple minutes here are going to be a little graphic. OK, um, so if you, you know, don't want to see that. You can skip to the time code. I'm going to put right up here. Um, but what you do need to know is that Kennedy was shot and killed and assassinated. So JFK was shot to death. As the motorcade approached the Texas Books Depository, shots rang out. And JFK was shot in the neck and then the head. His car was rushed to a nearby hospital uh, where doctors frantically tried to revive him. Um, however, he, he had passed. He was dead. And now we do have the film of this in action. Uh, it is called the Zabruda film because that was the person who went ahead and uh, filmed it. There is no sound for the film. Um, however, you can see it clear as day. Okay. It is very graphic though.
Okay. And aboard literally Air Force One, Lyndon Baines Johnson becomes our new president. He was the vice president. The nation mourned the death of the young president while Jackie Kennedy remained calm and poised. You can see that's literally it. The, the somber LBJ taking the oath of office on Air Force One with Jackie Kennedy next to him. You know, Jackie's still wearing the same coat that was drenched in the blood of Kennedy. Um, you can see her face absolute horrified that her husband was shot right next to her. JFK is laid to rest. You know, all work stopped for Kennedy's funeral. America mourned their fallen leader. You know, the assassination and the televised funeral became historic events. You know, like 9-11, Americans recall where they were when they heard the news of the president's death. You know, like, like we've said before, there are those instances in history that are like that. You know, the generation of Pearl Harbor remember where they were when they heard the news. This generation remembers where they were when they heard the news about Kennedy. You know, my generation know, remembers the new, when they heard the news about 9-11. And your generation may remember where you heard the news about the Boston Marathon bombing. Let's hope there's no more. Again, you have a three-year-old John Kennedy Jr., JFK Jr., uh, saluting his father's coffin during the funeral there. Um, is that's, that's Kennedy and the family. Jackie Kennedy and the family. So what happened? Well, Lee Harvey Oswald is charged and he himself is going to be assassinated. Uh, a 24-year-old Marine with a very suspicious past uh, left a palm print on the rifle used to kill JFK. Um, Lee Harvey Oswald, some still speculate, as there's so much conspiracy theory about this, if he really was the killer. Uh, he's charged, and as on national television, mind you, as they watched him get transferred from one jail to another, a nightclub owner, Jack Ruby, goes ahead, breaks through the crowd, and shoots Oswald to death. Literally, two days after the assassination. Again, we don't, it's a lot of mystery because of this, that we just don't know. A lot of unanswered questions. You know, this whole bizarre chain of events has led many to believe that Oswald was part of a conspiracy, and that, of course, all of this was conspiracy. You know, the Warren Commission is going to uh, investigate the assassination and determine that Oswald had indeed acted alone. In fact, recent you know filmmaker Oliver Stone isn't so sure. He's made this conspiracy theory uh, over here uh, called JFK in that film. So here we are. We have the Great Society now, which is a domestic policy under our new president, LBJ. Uh, and here's Senator, jo Senator Johnson pictured 1958 with a nerd, uh, as you can see. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, he does. He is now our new president. Fourth generation Texan. Um, he enters politics in 1937. And he's well qualified for the job. He admired FDR, who took uh, really the young congressman under his wing, as we do know. Um, now, Johnson became senator in 48. And by 55, he was a Senate, Senate majority leader. Again, very successful career. Now, his domestic agenda was pretty simple. He took office. He urged Congress to pass the bills that Kennedy had just uh, essentially fought so hard for the tax cut bill, uh, which is going to be send right to Capitol Hill, cuts taxes uh, by 10 billion. That's amazing. And of course, the Civil Rights Act. Again, something that again, Kennedy had started, LBJ is going to push to get put through in 1964. Um, and so what the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is, is a prohibited discrimination based on race, color, religion, national origin and granted federal government new powers to enforce that law. Uh, it's incredible, as of course, as you can see in the picture there, LBJ signing it in, and MLK Jr. is right there behind him. Uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1964 also is gonna be part of the Civil Rights Act, um, and it basically ensured voting rights for all Americans, no matter what color they are. Again, the act prohibited literacy tests or any of those discriminatory practices for voting, which we've seen, uh, again, kept African Americans from voting. Again, it ensured consistent election practices. Now, the war on poverty is going to continue. You know, following his tax cut and the Civil Rights Act, you know, LBJ does launch this uh, whole campaign here on the war on poverty. And in August of 1964, he pushed through Congress a series of measures known as the Economic Opportunity Act. Uh, the act provided $1 billion in aid to the inner city. He's also going to give a lot of other Economic Opportunity Acts. Uh, in fact, the 
Economic Opportunity Act also had the Job Corps, uh, VISTA, which is Volunteers in Service to America, Project Head Start for underprivileged preschoolers. Um, again, the Community Action Program, which encourages the poor to participate in public works programs. Um, again, Project Head Start is still going on today. These things really did change America. And it's no surprise that in 1964, LBJ wants to go for election now. He wants to be an elected president. So he goes up against Barry Goldwater of Arizona. And Barry Goldwater opposes LBJ's social legislation, what he's been doing. So Goldwater alienated voters by, well, suggesting the use of nuclear weapons in Cuba and North Vietnam. That is not what the public wanted to hear. Now, these very famous uh, ads are going to show you just how kind of crazy these ads were. other or we must die vote for president johnson on november 3rd the stakes are too high for you to stay home now lbj wins by a landslide again for many it was an anti-goldwater vote as a lot of people didn't like barry goldwater um, many americans saw him as a war hawk and so the democrats also increased the majority in congress and of course, now Johnson launches his reform program in earnest without anything really abating him at all. When I say a landslide, I mean, I mean, wow. So as he builds the Great Society, which yes, this is a real comic book, I actually have it. Um, again, his, it's his vision for America. And so much like Kennedy had the new frontier, LBJ has a great society. And by the time he left the White House in 1969, Congress has had passed 206 of LBJ's Great Society legislative initiatives. It's impressive. Uh, one, of course, is education, which Johnson considered education the key, which can unlock the door to the Great Society. Uh, he puts through the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, provided $1 billion to help public schools. <sighs> Very nice. Uh, by textbooks and, of course, library materials as well. You know, this act really does represent the first major federal aid package for education really ever. As remember, education is a state issue with the reserve power. He's also going to help out with health care. Uh, very famously, he establishes um, the Medicare, which Medicare provides hospital insurance for low-cost medical care to the elderly. And Medicaid helps provide health benefits for the poor. Again, think of it this way. You want to care for the elderly, you want to aid the poor. So again, Medicare is going to care for the elderly, and Medicaid is going to help aid the poor. Um, he's also going to go ahead and enhance Social Security. He was on a roll. Uh, housing, another one. LBJ and Congress are going to appropriate uh, money to build 240,000 units for low-rent public housing. Um, he's going to establish the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, still around today. Uh, and appointed the first black cabinet member, Robert Weaver, as HUD's first leader. Uh, this is incredible. Again, what, all the change that's happened here in the 1960s really feels like it's being channeled as a continuation of what Kennedy would have done had he had the opportunity. Uh, again, he does put through immigration reform as well. Um, his Great Society reformed uh, the National uh, Origins Acts in the 1920s, which strongly dis uh, discriminated against immigrants uh, by those outside of Western Europe. We talked about that as well in the 1920s. Now, the Immigration Act of 1965 opens the door for many non-European immigrants to settle here in the U.S. He helps the environment. Like he's done everything in this great society. Uh, the Water Quality Act of 1965 required states to clean up their rivers and lakes. Um, he also ordered the government to clean up corporate polluters of the environment, as they were very much a thing back then, especially. 
He also offers consumer protection. Um, major safety laws were passed in the U.S. auto industry, and Congress passed the Wholesome Meat Act of 1967. You know, LBJ said Americans can feel safer now in their homes, on the road, and at the supermarket because of this. Again, it's starting to sound like, well, another square deal almost, right? And it kind of was in a way. He also took reforms to the Supreme Court as well. Uh, reform and change were not just limited to the executive branch and the legislative branches. Uh, the judicial branch, led by the Supreme Court and Chief Justice Earl Warren, did much to protect individual rights at the time as well. Uh, one of the most important is, of course, uh, Miranda v. Arizona, where the court ruled that all suspects must be read their rights before questioning. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you can say will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be provided for you. Uh, in Map v. Ohio, Supreme Court ruled that it's illegally seized evidence could not be used in court. And Escobedo v. Illinois, uh, v. Illinois, uh, the court ruled that the accused had the right to have an attorney present when questioned by police. Uh, so again, all of these are huge in helping people's rights. Now, the impact of the Great Society is huge, but it begins to decline due to the cutback on programs on the war on poverty, and that money is going to be used instead on the Vietnam War. You know, the Great Society and the Warren Court, court is going to change the U.S. forever. And no president post-World War II era, still to this day, has extended the power and reach of the federal government more than LBJ. He was incredibly progressive for his time, uh, and we still see the effects today. And unfortunately, the, the Great Society could have continued, but what's going to happen next is not so much domestic policy here as we've been looking at. It's going to be foreign policy that's going to change America, and that's the Vietnam War. Thank you guys for joining me, and we'll catch you back in the classroom.